Hello, Robin. How are you doing? I'm good, Roger. How are you? I'm good. Yeah, coming good out of the window around. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll just give you a quick walkthrough. You can see that I'm way, way, way through all this first fixing. So all this yeah. stud works out, all the demolitions done, all of that horrible stuff's out of the way. We're completely enveloped here. We're in the dry. All of the first fix carpentry's done and we're just embarking on the first fix for everything else. So I did it in a particular order. The first of the first fix was the MVHR system, purely because the size of the ducts, the positions of the plenums, all that had to take precedence before I set out lights, for example. As an interviewer, yeah. I have to ask you what MVHR stands for, for those viewers who don't know. Okay, it's mechanical ventilation and heat recovery, and it's something that's been encouraged more and more and more. It's not, it's not a new thing, it's been around for a long time, and what it basically means is, we're building airtight houses now, Roger, so we're trying to make sure that we're not getting air leaking out, and we're not getting cold air coming in. But the product then allows you to ventilate that space and recover, this is more key, recover all that wasted energy that you generally send out from extractor fans, trickle vents and gaps in windows. Got it. All right. <laughs> and it's filtered. And it's filtered. When it goes around. Absolutely. It takes all the pollen out. Yeah, you've got various filters. So it's a very nice system. Um, it's very economical to run. Okay, let me just ask you a technical question. Yeah. Right? If, for example, I farted in the bedroom and my wife was on her way up the stairs, how long before that fart leaves the room? Well, a typically a bedroom would be, let's say, depending on the size, say 16 litres a second, it will be just taking... No, it will be supplying fresh air to the bedroom. It will be extracting from the bathroom. So if you've got an ensuite bathroom, oh, it will no. be drawing the air through and it will be supplying fresh air into the bedroom. They kind of work in time. So normal rules apply? Yeah. Fart just, in the bathroom. Just have a better diet and you won't do that so much. I'm not going to mention that word. Right, so moving swiftly on, um, so what we've got next, the next first fix item was the central vacuum system, which is the first time I've done a central vacuum system. Beam it's used. By Beam Electrolux is the unit. It's a, oh, it? it's a widely used product. I believe it's an American product. This one's come through a supplier in Ireland. Yeah. Um, and it comes as a kit, but the instructions are poor. The DVD you get is bad. It's really awful, and I've been on the phone to them, and they even said, yes, we know it's not particularly good. And so it gives you instructions for first fix, it gives you instructions for second fix, and it's, it's really bad news, it's, it's bad news. So I went on the YouTube, I do like a bit of YouTube, and I YouTube the heck out of this whole area, and I've been watching the Americans, the Australians, and there are some good content out there, and I've managed to pick up everything I need to know from YouTube, roll on YouTube. So basically, in a nutshell, we have, this is the end of the run for the vacuum okay. system. Yeah. This is our branch line, okay? This, oh, last, yeah. this last port here is eventually gonna come out to the plinth of the kitchen, and it has a foot-operated sweep switch. So you, you knock it with your toe and you can sweep to it and it just, instead of dustpan and brushing in the kitchen, and it goes in the branch line yeah. all the way back to the unit. Next to that off the branch line is this outlet here and that's for plugging the hose in. That's the rest of the outlets are all the same. As you plug the hose in, there's the electrical current that forms the circuit. Does that, that doesn't work on the flap? No, the flap is not until you actually plug the hose in and the hose has got a um, on off switch on it and that makes the connection and it turns the system on. So everywhere that you've got a pair of these, you've got one at the end, one at either end and then all the others are daisy chained together. Now, what you see here, this was something I picked up on YouTube from an Australian guy and the only knuckle bend that you have is straight out of the unit. Um, okay. the, and the idea is anything big gets stuck there, it can't pass anywhere else, you can get it back out. Now these, these are generally designed to go up, down, if you're going to come from the floor, you're going to come from the ceiling. But this guy in Australia said you always want to put yourself a horizontal trap in. Because sometimes you've been vacuuming, you come to the unit, you turn it off, and if you turned it off within a couple of seconds of doing that, your bit that's gone in here is going to fall back down, it's going to end up... Yeah. In the... Trust an Australian to think about that. Yeah, it was great. They're, they're the other way up, aren't they? Oh, of course they are, yeah, they're upside down. So anyway, coming back to this, so you've got, this is the next step of the first fix. I've run all of this pipe work in. 
Um, all of those are in back to the central plant room. Now in the plant room, we've also got the start of the plumbing first fix. So we've got the boiler hung on the wall. We've got our new cold main in there. We've got some other pipes in there, which we ran early as well, which is like a secondary return and a hot feed back to the other side. So that's the next step now. We're gonna do the plumbing and then the electrics. So the electrics is fairly straightforward where you've got these open web joists because there's no drilling to do. It's just plenty of cable tying, keeping your looms of cables together nice and neatly. And then what I've got to do for all my downlight positions to help the spark is I'll hang a cable tie from the ceiling in exactly the right position. So when he comes into a room, he'll see the cable ties and he'll know that they're down lights. All he needs to know is what circuits they're on, which ones are on together. But they generally speak for themselves. So, and the other thing I'll do is I'll go around putting all of the electric boxes on. Mm. So I'll nog everything, screw all those on in exactly the right position. So the electrician again can say socket, socket, socket. And if there's- So you're using metal back boxes. Yep. You don't go for the plasterboard ones. I don't mind the plasterboard, the drywall back boxes. Yeah. Um, I don't mind them at all. But I'd sooner have a metal back box me because I'd just like them to be really solid because I do, I have seen before, if they're not particularly well cut in at the time of installation and when you're putting the plugs in, plugs out, plugs in, plugs out, you know, they can sometimes yeah. loosen up. You've yeah. got to keep tweaking them up. I so find I, those little lugs are horrible as well. Yeah. Sometimes they just pull out, don't they? I have got something else. I'll just show you this as well. This is something I sourced as an alternative. So this is another idea. So this oh, is yeah. a series of boxes. Nice. Which basically, 400s. they mount on and you can decide whether you use a double socket or a couple of spurs. They're all set out nicely. I quite like this product. They have a little spirit level inside them as well. Um, what I would do is just route those in because I've always got a router set up just to take off the thickness of that because again, the drywall's gonna yeah, bend out. Yeah. And this is the light switch socket. That's nuts. I actually put a little, a little spirit, spirit level, level in there, yeah. inside each one. Save you getting it out. Whoa! So, I mean, that's a nice idea. And they've got... Crazy, man. So, let's say you're going to use this one and not these ones. You snap off these little tabs here, yeah. which all they do is they mark the plasterboard. Yeah, yeah, When you put sure. the plasterboard up. Oh, yeah. And then you've got the exact spot. Yeah. yeah. So, I think this is a fab fabulous product, but I'm just not sure whether I'm going to use it or not. And the simple reason being is this is the light switch that you mount next to the stud near the door and it sets you away from the architrave enough. Mm -hmm. But there's no fixing on this side, so you'd still have to sort of craft in a bit of a noggin, which is just there. So, yeah, yeah I'm, not, what? I'm not sure. I, I, you like that? I, I like them, yeah. This is, this is, I've got a bit of this to do. Where'd you get hold of this? I actually sourced those uh, from the internet, actually. Did I did you? a bit of research and sourced them on the internet. I'm not unhappy with that as well, an take, idea. Take it. I could, no, 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 it. I don't want to do that, mate. I'll get some, but I'm thinking you put a noggin along the back there. Yeah, just, well. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, I'd, I'd get the chop saw yeah. and just tr trench it out. Yeah, I'd, See, so so it's, the idea of this one is it, it, it's got a side screw, ang angle screw into the stud. Oh, so they're saying there. And so they're saying that it's, it's enough. It's but, enough. I've tried it, I've screwed it on, and there's enough flex in that, but, but I think if you push the drywall board over it, the plasterboard, we wouldn't get the stab mark, so I don't know. But, um, so the jury's out whether or not I go for those or not. I've got the Sparky coming here tomorrow, and we'll have a good chat about it. If he likes it, then Colin, we'll Colin yeah. Colin's coming down. Colin's coming down, yeah. We'll have to try and catch him a little bit on camera. Yes, absolutely, yeah. So, so a typical back box, so this is a 25mm metal box, you can just... You know, when that's on a nog in there and it's screwed well back, that's not going anywhere. No. It's just not going anywhere. You make a good point, my friend, and probably 60p as opposed to Yeah, I think three, these, yeah, that's probably three, three or four three. times the price and probably more than that. I think this is probably, yeah, you're right, 50 or p or okay. less than that. Yeah, yeah. Of, buying them in bulk. Do you know what? The miser with me. And I'll go around, it'll take me a, probably a day to nog everything out. Just, I'll just go around with my circular saw, all my offcuts of timber that I keep, and I'll set it all up. All of my noggins that I've put in, the stud work, they've all been put in with a laser. So everywhere I go, I know the exact position down to my sockets. So I'll nog it all to there, and then the last thing before I put the boxes on, I'll just set the laser up just once for that, and just make sure they're exactly right. But anyone will know that you can be plus or minus a couple of mil on a socket from one to the other. No one's gonna read it. So, um, so that's that part of the first fix. So we've talked about the vacuum system, the MVHR, a little bit on the electrics. Now plumbing, that's another interesting one. So 
with this build because we've had to do new water mains new drainage we've had to adjust existing drainage we've done a hell of a lot already so really all we're doing now is distributing pipe work from a central location to shower rooms bathrooms kitchen utility room etc and most of that will be in continuous lengths so where we come from the boiler room over to an ensuite we're going to do those in continuous lengths. We'll use a barrier pipe. Yeah, yeah. And then we will convert to brass fittings and copper locally. And I'm going to be looking at using those really nice systems in frames that you've introduced me to, because I really like the systems. I think they're, 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 they're solid. The toilets bolt exactly to them, so I really appreciate you showing me those. Um, it's the way to go. It's the future. Definitely. I, I reckon, you know, when I look around at some of these jobs that people do where they're boxing in saw pipes and messing around, and I think they don't look any better. You know, they think, oh, you've wasted that much by putting a pre-wall in, but then it's all your pipe work, everything's behind there, got a lovely surface to clean. Well, let's have a little look at one of the bathrooms. I'll show yeah. you, thanks to your input, I'll show you what we're aiming to do. This isn't a plant room, this is a disco. Well, I must admit, Roger, you're quite right. All the walls are pre-finished. I've had them all pre-finished. So what I did, I did a fire barrier first of plasterboard, the whole thing, mm. and then I bonded this material back and back fixed it through the plasterboard that you could probably, it's probably a little bit hard to see here. And that enables me to then hang the boiler, put the pipes through, got the central vacuum system here, and everything then is all perfectly, we just drill through wherever we need, and there's no making good or painting or anything else afterwards. So I've just learned from over the years, if you have a freshly plastered room and you start putting services in it, it's really difficult to decorate. Yeah, they're horrible. I hate seeing that paint yeah. going behind the pipes. And, and one of the best so. things about this is that it will t you, know, you can mark it and sort of wipe it straight off. Yeah. Or you can, it don't, isn't, doesn't even show a pencil mark because this kind of stuff looks a little bit kind of bronzy, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, it looks like it's all got a lead pencil, something yeah. like being around and done it. Yeah, yeah. so oh, that's lovely. So, this is where the plant room is, and yeah. you can see that there's, you know, it's hard to see, but you can see that the cold main's coming in there, and yeah. we've got a couple of other pipes. So, we've got the gas to bring over, which is going to be a track pipe running in the screen. Oh, I know, yeah. Coming up, but again, a continuous that's pipe. Stainless steel, yeah. From the meter all the way back to here, there'd be no joins in it. Where did you get the board from? The board came from Cutrights, which is one of my favourite suppliers. You were asked about them. I get asked about them a, a lot, actually. Yeah, and um, so it, actually, incidentally, it's an interesting question, Dylan. So this whole wall, for example, the ceiling, everything came in in one piece. I had them all cut to size, so it was just a matter of getting them off the lorry bringing them in and bonding them back in. There was no cutting to do at all. Even these panels here I had edged. So where my door lining travels up against them, these are already the architrave margin. So this will set. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah? You're not gonna bother, you won't have There won't be an architrave. This is That's a set of the architrave. The lining will come in, come in behind there and it's exactly right. So it's just a little bit of forethought, a little bit of setting out, but, um, being a carpenter, I know exactly how big doors are. Can I just are. ask you one question about this beam? Yeah. This is the central vacuum system yeah. that you've got. Now, um, it's sucking air in through this two inch pipe, so I'm reckoning this is a fairly big old motor in here. Yeah. Right? It's sucking air in, it's going to fill this room up, especially if you've got a tight fitted door, it's going to put this room under positive pressure, isn't it? Well, I've got, got, come out, I've got an extractor it? in here which is running all the time. Uh, so this extractor is also back to the MVHR system. So all the heat that's generated in here by the boiler, mm -hmm. the cylinder, is going to be recovered, mixed with warm air, uh, fresh air and put in back into the house. Yeah. So this was specified by Linda. They said, look guys, you need to have in your boiler room, it's a hot room, let's, let's put an extractor fan in there. Reuse so it's, all, it's always going. So uh, you're quite right, this is going to be sucking through and blowing out the exhaust. It goes through this baffle here comes out the exhaust and it's literally going to be coming into this room and there will be no What's more. What's that filter? What do you say baffle? That just quiets it down. What, have you got a filter in it? Have the, filter the filters in? are all inside. Okay. The filters are all inside. So that baffle 
basically. So that's what's that HEPA filter in the bottom? Is it? There's a, there's filters inside. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure which ones which. You have to take them out. But, yeah, yeah, okay. So um, it's all filtered. Yeah. But that's that's also where well, you can plug in the Hoover as well, so you can do a bit of hoovering in here. Not that you yeah, need yeah. to, as you as yeah, well outside. Yeah. But um, that's a really good point. So. There will be a 10 mil gap under the door, which is always recommended with any extractor system. Anything tighter than that, it's just not going to work. No, no, fine. No, no, I, just, I was interested because I know it's that problem of you know fans in shower rooms. People have got an extractor, but it's all sealed up and it's not working, is it? So, okay, there's a balance here. That's yeah, good. yeah, yeah. Really good point, though. Pretty good. Was. Nice. And then into this this little bathroom here. This is where your pre walls are going to go. So, oh, yeah. Okay. So what we've got is. This wall has been made sort of double thickness, if you like. It's two uh, studs yeah, wide. Yeah, yeah. And where the soil is going to come up, this is exactly the size of one of your frames. 500, yeah. Just stand straight in there, okay. bolt straight back. You've got that lovely pan connector, bent pan connector that's on. This comes as standard. Comes yeah. as standard, okay. which basically ends up straight into my soil. Yeah. I've got the hand basin here, and again, the waste can pass through and link in. Yeah. So it's a really nice construction. Yeah. Um, and this is going to be an in-wall unit. So, okay, I've lost. Have you bought the unit or, or what? Do you no, know I what need you to help me work that one okay, out. Okay, yeah, because I was saying you might have to adjust that slightly there. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. So you fine. won't board it until no, you know. No, yeah. I will. I mean, ideally, I just want one over, the, over there. But if I can get something that looks decent over both and have the storage. Yeah, I, I don't see why not. Yeah, yeah. so that'd be really helpful. We like a mirror. Mirrored one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The mirrored door, that yeah. sort of thing. Because you like a look in the old mirror every so often, don't you? Well, Check all this hair, I've got to keep all this, this hair. This is not going to be your bathroom, though, is it? No, This no. is going to be for the, the This uh, is just guests. an occasional bathroom, yeah. The guests. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be for you, mate. Oh, thanks, mate. And Dylan. He doesn't we, wash. We have oh, a, no, we have we having a sleepover. <laughs> so, we will have many a you'll see that a couple of the internal walls have got OSB on. And I love that. This is... Basically, because it's part of the structural. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is a racking, ah, just for racking. Got it. That's to stop this one. Yeah, it's that's, just a racking. So when the wind blows, when the hurricanes come, to stop this building rocking like that. Exactly. That's what they call racking, just for those. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to talk to people who don't know anything about the terminology. Yeah. Mm. Racking a building is when it goes. Mm -mm. Mm. I remember going to a house in Bristol. Actually, I'll tell you who owned it. A guy from Massive Attack. And um, the builder had taken out every single internal wall, three floors up. Ouch. And they said they needed to get those walls back in the middle because when the wind blows, you could actually yeah, see bet. the whole building. It's so over 100 years old, this building, and it was going like that. Swimming around. Up in Clifton, you know, where the wind blows. But, but anyway, yeah, that's racking. Yeah. Anyway, so. no, this is great. Do you know what I thought this was for? Because I do this in kitchens. Yeah. If I do a stud wall in the kitchen, OSB, then the plaster. Yeah, it's brilliant. that way. And, you know, yeah, kitchen fitter loves that. He can just screw his screw straight in for all his, hang all his units on it. I don't like putting plasterable yeah. fixings. Kitchen units on plasterable fixings. I know yeah. they say they're taking. Well, funnily enough, what we'll do in our kitchen there, so we'll take, we'll dry, we'll dry line the wall. Yeah. So it will be, be tape and jointed and ready for painting. But between, because we've got like a tower unit either end, that whole wall will be plied before the kitchen goes in. So I do exactly the same thing. I just have my end panels made to accommodate that ply. Okay. So I the understand. side panels. Yeah, so you yeah. do exactly what you're talking about. When you say about. ply, you, 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 you so the whole, ply or OSB? Or you the just whole wall will be probably plywood, sort of like yeah. a um, Far Eastern, so a smooth face ply, yeah. Yeah. nice and solid. The reason for it is because um, I do like OSB, but all the time it's on show until it's finished. The only bit you'll see, incidentally, is above the work surface and between the units or between the shelves. But in our case, we're going to have like a um, antique mirror splashback. So that will get bonded straight back to the ply as well. Do you know what? You just made me realise something. What's that? No need. Because I'm going to plaster board, plaster, then fit the units on. But actually, if we work it out first, the only bit that needs to have anything on it is that bit, isn't it? What we would call the tile splashback. Yeah. The rest of it, who cares? Yeah. So yeah, no, so good, good all point. these little tips. Um, but the way of doing that, so on my, because a lot of my kitchen's on exterior walls, so what we've got is a vapour barrier, mm. and we've got a counter button, and then we can put in a vapour check plasterboard on as well. So if I applied it first and then put the vapour check barrier on, 
it would mess up my sort of system, if you know what I mean. So that's where I come to doing it on the other side. I know there's plasterboard you can get now, which is super strong, and it will take a screw. Costs. Uh, yeah, and I haven't actually... We reviewed it. it, it it's, it's all right. Yeah. But, right, there's two things with that plasterboard, the name of which I forget at yeah. the moment, but we've, we've actually done a review on it, British Gibson product. And the first thing is that it's expensive, so nobody stocks it. So if you want to mm. buy it, you've got to go and buy a pallet load of it because mm. you won't pick it up out of your merchants. And the other thing is, if you're the chippy or you're the plumber or you're anybody else and you come along and you see a plasterboard wall, you can't tell that it is that product. Mm. As I far see. as it, it just yeah, looks. No one's, unless someone's actually said you can screw anywhere yeah, you like exactly. It. So if you're that guy who comes along and you want to hang a radiator, you know you can hang a radiator, put a screw straight into it and it'll hold a radiator. But if you don't know, you're going to do what you always do, which is knock it out and whatever. So, so it's kind of like it. People need to know it's there. Personally, I can't see it ever catching on in a big way. But there mm. you go. it's a good. Unless idea. you've got somewhere where, like, a school where you want a particularly hard ah, wall. No, yeah. Sorry, for new build or commercial properties. Mm. Different. Guns. Yeah. Sorry, I'm talking about the R work. R kind of. Yeah. Work. Yeah. Everyday builders. Yeah. yeah. So there's so that's basically the first bits talked about. Um, your pipe work again, Roger. Roger it's going to come out of the central plant room, travel through to other bathrooms. Like here, there's another wall there which will encapsulate all of the pipes in, and then we've got um, 200 millimeters to finish floor enough to get our wastes in for the showers mm -hmm. and the falls and everything else. So it's all mapped out and ready to go. Fantastically exciting stage yeah, it to is. reach, and without wishing to big you up, because you know I don't like to big you up, don't you? It gets enough bloody fans on school builder <laughs> without me bigging him up. Let's face it. I yeah. tell you, what, I'd like to thank everyone who's kind enough to even comment and take time to ask the odd question, because actually I get a lot out of that. I really enjoy the feedback and everything else, and I do love what I do. And I was lucky enough to work all through my career and still do with really passionate people, no matter what trade they're in. And I just think that we've all got something to share. Yeah, no, I, th I think it's brilliant. But what I was going to say is I can't understand. I think I'll put myself through something sometimes, a bit <laughs> little stressed, a bit, you know, too much, taking too much on. But bloody hell, mate, you've managed to still go out, do your day job, yeah. do all this. I know you've done some late evenings and some weekends and so on. But you get in there, mm. and you get, get in, in there. there. Quite honestly, when I saw this, you know, at the beginning of the year in January, I thought, bloody hell, it's got a way to go here. Mm. And quite honestly, it's coming. It's, it's taking shape. It's getting there. Yeah. I know. Um, I feel. I'm feeling that the the pressure's lifting a little bit. Is it good? I'm glad about it. I'm glad you feel that. You know, every time you you fix something in, it's kind of like it's a job done. Yeah. And I think the great thing about you, probably what I could learn, if you know, if I had my career again. Do it right, get it right first time, mm. so you don't have to go back on it. Mm. So there's not that stage where you think, oh, I could have done that better, mm. should have done it. Take your time. But it is frustrating that because sometimes people say to me, they rock up and they go, so what have you done then? And I'll say, I'll go X, Y, Z, and it, it oh, is. Oh, really? Who are those people? Oh, you know, that? people, like layman or someone who's not really tra trade-based, they might come in and think, Blimey, you thought you might be painting by now. Oh, and no, there's no really. idea what goes into it. Do you know it, what? So. I blame DIY, SOS, <laughs> changing rooms, and all those programs like that because I know, because you know, I've been to a few of those places, they've got a small army of people working behind the scenes on those jobs. You know, they've got a big old crew on it. And as far as the viewer sitting at home goes, they see it, they go, oh, look, they've got a loft conversion in a week. Mm. So when you go in there and they say, how long is it going to take? You say, six months. Go, ah, six months. They expect it to take mm. six weeks that's at a, most. Do you know what, Roger? There's a podcast for us in the future. Yeah. And that's um, how builders say it's going to take so, so long and it actually takes a lot longer. And that's so many, so many variables about that, you know. Yeah, but also the customer expecting something so big to be done so quickly. I've, you know, had, can't, can't, I've had customers before at tender stage say to me, we want you to tender for the job. I said, great. And they said, it's a six month job. I said, well, that sounds good. Get the paperwork, take it away, look at it. And I think, oh, how can I do that in six months? I can't do that in six months. And I think, is it me? Is it, is it, am I just bad at what I do? Mm -hmm. um, and I think, no, you can't do that in six months. And I go back to them and say, it's more like a year for me. 
Do you want yeah. me to carry on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they go, oh, it's got to be done in six months. And if I don't get the job, I drive past in like 18 months time and there's still someone plodding away. And I think it's taken longer than 18 months, not yeah. even a year, yeah, you know, yeah. so. I, and Who knows? Al- and also, the other thing is that when it's done, you've had it all slashed in because you've been helping on reaching some imaginary deadline there, you know, maybe a Christmas, you know, that it's got to be finished yeah. for Christmas. How many Magic. jobs have you done? I know. Oh, it must be done That's by Christmas. It must be done. Christmas comes and goes just like that. And they've rushed everything, you know, and, and they've got all the problems that come by that. Like, we know, you walk across and it's creak, creak, squeak, squeak on the boards because nobody shoved the glue down and done the job yeah. properly. Yeah, I know. So it goes on, doesn't it? So after that six months, everything's falling apart and everything needs fixing. So yeah. what have they gained? I know, it's not there, isn't it? So there you are, people, if you're watching and you want builders, give them time to do the job properly, because that's what Robin's doing. We've, we've covered dressing gowns. You don't like those, do you? No, no, no. They what? don't make me angry, dressing gowns. They why why don't you depressed. like dressing gowns? Well, my mother, my mother was a proper manic depressive, you know, dressing stay gown. in bed three days and, you know, she, she used to use illness as a defense. She had six kids, so she would escape. So some day she would get up She'd be in her dressing gown, five o'clock in the afternoon, she's still in her dressing gown, she's got a pair of stockings on, rolled down to her ankles, and I'm just looking at her, and that would be her day, and I just think, you haven't even got up, you haven't even joined the world. And, uh, but you still like stockings though, Rog. And I just still like stockings. <laughs> it's just, not, a, you don't mind the but stockings. not on my mum, not on my mum. Oh, Sorry. not on yourself, What, what about yeah. on a chicken? I'm happy, stockings on a chicken's leg, nothing better. <laughs> no, look, I'm, I'm, it's just that, isn't it? It's, I'll tell you another thing, Robin, and this, you know, you go back, because you know, you. What? how many kids in your family? Seven? Yep. Seven, right. Six kids in my family, washing. Where do you dry the washing, right? In the garden, on the line. Yeah, but when it's not sunny and you've got six kids... Still goes on the line. No. As long as the wind, there's a bit of wind. Be it's sensible. a big debate anyway. Be sensible, be sensible, right? Before you had central heating... Oh, you're heating. hanging indoors? Before you had central Radiators. heating... Radiators. Well, that's what I'm saying. But before you had central heating, we had bloody washing strung up everywhere for days on end, mm. trying to dry, ready for the school. Mm. You know, Monday morning, mm. six kids, six mm. loads of clothes. Mm. Where'd you get them clean? Where'd you get them dry? Mm. Constant problem, wasn't it? Mm. And that, and I can't stand it to this day. <laughs> if anybody ever wanted to hang out anything over a radiator to dry it, I'm going to put it in a tub of dry, please just do it. Well, yeah. Because I can't stand seeing washing lying around. Even somebody's got a pair of knickers on top of the radiator, I go into their house, I go, ah. Don't you like that? I just, uh, what do you do with them? Stuff them in your pocket and save them say to the, I say to the customer, because invariably it's a woman, Hopefully yeah. with a pair of knickers. Well, that's what I'm saying, invariably, but not, you know. Anyway, I say to the customer, look, let me take those home for you, I'll wash them and return them. And she's like, perv. <laughs> that's just, that's the service I provide. <laughs> oh, on. Roger. Come on. Quality, absolutely quality. Well, well I just think you should just go commando because Basically, it means you haven't got to buy underwear. Secondly, you haven't got to wash underwear. Oh, if you, you think how many millions of people there are in the world, billions of people are in the world, if, um, I don't want to put anyone out of business, especially lingerie makers, there's always a space for lingerie, but if you don't wear underwear, you haven't got to wash underwear, and if you think percentage of garments, that's probably 5% of your garments, you think how much, we're gonna save turtles and whales and everything.